welcome everybody. Today we will be talking about parental nutrition. So today I've changed a little bit. It was long presentation. I uh, cut it very short and I will uh, right away go to the end to discuss cases. So I thought maybe discussing cases is a little bit better than giving you a uh, theory. So uh, uh, um, is um, giving the uh, child nutrient through the IV, giving fat, carbohydrate, protein, vitamin, mineral, and IV fluid to meet the basic metabolic requirement and for the child to grow. Uh, parenteral nutrition, when we say parenteral nutrition, not total, means the child is getting IV nutrition, but also he is at the same time on, on oral uh, food. Uh, we actually don't know how much we should give for the optimal growth or optimal amount of energy, but somewhere between 70 to 90 without the need to grow. That's, that's just like the uh, basic metabolic requirement. Um, there are uh, calories come from different uh, nutritional items from dextrose or sugar. We uh, uh, we get about 3.5 kilocal per gram. Protein give a little bit more, 4 kilocal per gram, but the sugar is ready made and quick and fast. Uh, protein uh, calories uh, is, uh, take a little bit of time. And fat is the most generous item for uh, calories, which is 9 kilocal per gram. Per gram. Now, when we give uh, um, carbohydrate, uh, we need to keep the basic uh, sugar metabolism at the same, like as a, a, at um, an acceptable level. Now, what are this level is we don't know. We know the level when it goes below some level, it causes some metabolic derangement. And when it goes above, uh, it causes some uh, side effect. And that's why we know this is level, but actually nobody measured and nobody know what is the normal level. So the best level is in here, which is uh, four to eight millimole per liter, and it's about 72 to 145 milligram per deciliter. And in this situation, the infusion rate should be, the normal infusion rate should be somewhere between five to eight milligram per kg per minute. And there are ways how to calculate the sugar infusion. So that's your optimal situation, your level between four and eight and uh, your infusion rate between five to eight milligram per kg per minute of sugar. And if you want to go very meticulous, you can do also the sugar level, uh, sugar in urine, and you should have not, you should not have sugar in urine and also, or you have trace amount. Now what happens if you go less than 40, like four millimole or 72 milligram per deciliter, you increase your infusion rate. So instead of giving five to eight, you go to the extreme of giving five, eight to nine milligram per kg per minute. While when it goes below 3.3 .3 millimole, which is uh, again um, around 40, uh, this is wrong. I think it's around uh, less than uh, uh, 69 or 68, something like that. Okay. And uh, you are more than three days of age. So if you are less than 3.3 .3 and you are more, then you need to investigate the cause. But if you are less than three days, you don't need to investigate the cause if it's less than 3.3. .3. And this investigation is you send urine sugar to see if the sugar is lost in the urine, critical value, including growth hormone and insulin level. You do blood gaps. And you have to increase the rate at that time to more than nine. If you need to give, and you have to continue increasing, if you need to give concentration of sugar more than 15%, then you need a second line. Uh, you guys should mute yourself, okay? Um, so if you need to give uh, more than 15%, you should start to have central line. You cannot give more than 15 uh, by peripheral IV. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you can give it for like a few hours. That's going to be a problem. But if it's more than, I would say, three days, you need that, then you need a central line. 
If the concentration reached to 25% dextrose, then you need another medication to help because that you will cause phlebitis and the child will not able to, de to deal with this amount of sugar. So you start to give clogagon in, in, in case of emergency, you might need to give uh, steroid and start to consider diazoxide and uh, somatostatin analog. And this one should be like in discussion with the endocrinologist. Um, that's when the sugar is low. When the sugar is high and you're prescribing a TPN and it's more than eight, you drop the infusion dose. But you should never go below five milligram per kg per minute, even if your sugar is high. Now, if you drop your sugar intake, okay, and this, the numbers are wrong. It's, it's more than, this is wrong. This is, I think, 245. So if your sugar uh, infusion rate is five milligram per kg and your sugar level more than 10, then you need to start insulin. And the best starting point is 0.02 unit per kg per hour, and then you control them. You can increase them. But never drop the sugar below five milligram per kg per minute. So this is very short about how to give sugar. And there was a lot of talk about sugar. I can keep talking for hours, but I've DC it, so I won't give you more theory. Now, also, we need to give a protein, and protein, um, the starting point is the uh, amount of protein giving by placenta to the baby, which is 1.5 gram per kg per day. And you can start with that and then increase it to two or three. And now, people sometimes start aggressive and give more than 1.5 gram per kg per day. And there are many types of, of uh, amino acid, but all have the same concentration, either 1%, 2%, and 3%. And their electrolyte content, um, almost same apart from the acetate, which is uh, increasing with the high concentration. And an example of this is uh, aminosin and uh, trophamine, but, but, but there are many other types. Uh, the fat is very important, so we add sugar, protein, and fat uh, for normal growth and development and other function. And uh, the fat is the most, as we said, because it's the provide nine kilocal per uh, gram, is, is the most common source of, of calories. And now most of the lipid that we give in para neutral nutrition is uh, derived from soya. Now, uh, since about 2010, we've changed the, uh, the TPN to what we call it SMOF, which is soya, soya oil, soya, soya bin, and uh, olive oil, and um, medium chain uh, triglyceride, and uh, fish. And they said with the SMOF, we had a significant increase, decrease in uh, TPN associated cholestasis. There are many types of, of, uh, of lipid, uh, example intralipid, liposin, neutrilipid, uh, depend on the company, there are many types. Um, the lipid, uh, I want to say, and I remove this also because of, of sake of time, and they are either 10% or 20%. When it's 20% lipid, it's usually one gram in five mil, but when it's 1%, it's uh, when it's uh, five, uh, temp, uh, when it's twenty percent, it's five mil per uh, one gram per five mil. When it's ten percent, is one gram per ten mil. And this is more common when you have good amount of IV fluid. So when you have a good room, you can use the low concentration. But when you don't have room, you go low concentration. But when you go to low concentration, your risk of of complications is more, uh, including infection and. Uh, so you have to be careful and, and use a certain way of giving surfactant. I'm not gonna give everything today because it's confusing. I wanna give you an idea. Vitamins are, uh, are, are, are multivitamin suspension for IV fluid. And usually the dose is two mil for um, a Britain baby and uh, of the five mil reconstitution MPI, which is the uh, multivitamin solution. It's very important uh, to know that if it's a plastic, uh, the vitamins might be uh, stuck to the wall and you need to be careful what type of infusion set you're using. 
uh, you need also to drive so we have sugar we have a protein we have fat we have multivitamin and then you need to add some trace elements like zinc copper chromium manganese there are a mix of of it and usually the dose is 0.1 or 0.2 ml uh, per kg you need to add the electrolytes especially sodium potassium sometimes you need calcium and chloride and other and usually on the first day we don't add electrolyte we add it on the second day and sometimes you need to add heparin and usually we add 0.5 to 1 unit per ml of TPM. We add it when there is risk of lipiasis or, or so especially when you use a thick line, a peripheral inserted central line and especially those started at the dorsum of the hand or at the, uh, at the dorsal speeds, uh, not those who started at the elbow or at the uh, at the knee joint and above, there are more risk of, so you need a, but it's not a must. So uh, whenever you think that there will be a risk of blockage and uh, uh, risk of lipiasis, then you start to, because it decreased significantly the risk of lipiasis and increase uh, the lipid clearance from the wall. So what type of TPN? There are three types. TPN starter, TPN standard, and prescribed TPN. So what is the difference? TPN starter is TPN only with protein, nothing else. So once your baby is born, you start your TPN. To, uh, you start your TPN, and you give TPN starter because you don't need pharmacy, you don't need a prescription, you did not need anything. Just hang it, and it's available always. The other one is standard TPN, which is ready-made TPN from the company. So and there are usually three types, but it can be more. And usually we use the type one for first three days and type two after three days and type four, uh, type three you after that for, uh, and there, there might be neonatal and there might be pediatric. So it mixed with, um, uh, and when we say standard TPN and TPN, so we're talking about the protein, multivitamin, any, all, every, all the TPN apart from a lipid because lipid usually separated from other TPN. So these are standard TPN is very important for uh, units when it's not qualified to mix the TPN and they are ready made and you don't need pharmacists. The prescribed TPN, the most better one, the most difficult to deal and the most difficult to monitor. What does that mean? So you have a, a unit to mix the TPN or you have a machine called micro macro composer to mix the TPN. Um, so uh, uh, the prescribed TPN, um, uh, you said how much fluid, how much protein, how much sugar, how much lipid, how much vitamins, how much, and then you make, make an order and the pharmacy mix it um, by hand or uh, they mix it by a machine called micro macro composer where all the components of TPN are, are connected to uh, a machine and the machine according to special program mix and give you the TPN with a better calculation. So that's the most difficult and need everyday uh, monitoring and the, but the most optimal because you can give very high protein, low fluid, you can change whatever you want. You can remove electrolyte, you can still give it when there is electrolyte imbalance like you have hyperkalemia or hypokalemia or hypernatremia but in this one, when you develop problem, probably you need to stop the TPN and start uh, uh, stop TPN and start fluid appropriate for that uh, electrolyte problem. You monitor, you measure the anthropometric um, uh, parameters, and you do some laboratory, um, and this is how to monitor. Um, and you can weight, length, and circumference, and what is the frequency of doing it what's the electrolyte you need to monitor and what you do. Um, it's very long list and the TPN is long process, but, but I cut it off because I want to see, I want to read to the cases so we can discuss the cases together. Now the calorie requirement is somewhere between 100 to 120 for meeting basic requirement and growth, but for the uh, meeting basic requirement is 70 to 90. And when there is hypermetabolic infant for any reason like failure like um, sick or rapid growth then you might need to increase 
um, you need to remember the uh, uh, the oral intake when you calculate and how much protein you're getting because when you give less than pro less protein than need uh, the body starts to use the stored um, protein and then you will lose the growth but if you give more then you start to be positive nitrogen balance and you get metabolic problem and you get um, gas problem and the uh, you get acidosis, so you need to make sure that you're meeting the uh, typical requirement for protein, not uh, causing hyperammonemia and hyperproteinemia and metabolic problem, but also not losing the weight because you are giving less uh, protein than uh, required. Fluid, it depends on the gestation and it depends on the osmolality and it depends on the gestation and the post-delivery date and the amount of insensible water loss. So I've listed here the insensible water loss for a different uh, birth weight. Um, you have to monitor the um, fluid. And I'm sure most of you know that signs of dehydration or overhydration, blood pressure and, and pulse and, and respiration and capillary refill and also the hemoglobin. Um, the maintenance of the fluid in the first day and term infant we start at 80 usually and then we increase on second day to 100, 120 depend on the until we might reach to 165 and this of course guided by the urine output weight and uh, electrolyte level. The sodium that's the normal uh, 2 to 4, the potassium 1 to 2 in a preterm infant, instead of starting, um, uh, this is day two, sorry, and day one we start on, on 65 in, in term baby, but in term, in preterm baby we start on day one at 80. So in day two, 80, should be 60 here, but we're missing 60, uh, 65, sorry, we're missing 65 here. Second day is 80, while in, in preterm baby we start at 80, and then we increased, um, um, so here, here we're missing day one, sorry. And day one is here is 80, day one here is 65 in time, baby. And again, we go in second day, we go to 80 and, 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 and then 100, while in Britain, baby, we start at 80 and the second day we go to 100 and so on. And the sodium and potassium requirement are the same. Uh, in, in, chi in children, you use the holiday cigar method. Uh, first, then you give 100 ml, second, then you give 50, third, then you give, you give uh, anything more than 20, you give 20 ml per cage. Or you can give uh, over the rate 4, 2, and 1 ml per hour for different uh, weight. Uh, this is the um, different type of, of saline and what is the concentration of, of, uh, of the, of the uh, sodium in these different salines. And as I said, um, and this is how, to, how we uh, order TPN. So you can see the item here and you can see how many mil you're getting. Okay. So you can see these are the requirement for from neonate to 12 years. And you can see this is a requirement for more than 13 years. And then you start to list well, the uh, day one or day two or day 10 or day 20, whatever the date, and what is the total daily volume. And then uh, uh, what is the volume order from other IV fluid, if you're using other IV fluid. And what's the volume from your uh, TPN basic, which is the protein and lipid, and what's the concentration of the lipid if you're using 20 or other, and what's the amount uh, in volume, and then what is your total basic without uh, the lipid, and then what's your amino acid, what's your glucose, what's your water, what's your sodium, and so on, and what's your trace element, what's your vitamin, are you giving vitamin K, are you adding carnitine, are you adding ranitidine, and are you adding heparin? If you want to add heparin, you add it here, and then you write, and then you write what's your um, rate of basic, of lipid, and of the uh, total. 
So here where I want to reach uh, to the cases. So we want to discuss cases so you guys know a little bit better um, how to order uh, uh, TPM. For those using the phone, please change your name. Like Galaxy A7 217, who is this? I'm going to remove you. I'm going to give you one minute before you change your name. So you please go out and come back with your real name. Okay, and Muna Phone, and who's that? So please write your Huba Phone, yeah. well, well, Huba iPhone, who's that? And we're professional, we should have a real name. So Hoopa iPhone, please change your name to your real name so I know who I'm talking to. Now I allowed you today, but I'm not gonna allow you again. Galaxy, please, I'm gonna change your name. I'm gonna remove you. So um, let's go back to the TPN. So uh, the case here is asking you to write TPN for two days old um, infant. He's 29 weeks, and he was born at 1,200 grams. And today is 11, today weight is 1,170. They gave him on the first day 80 ml per kg per day IV fluid. They are not feeding him because he has feeding intolerance. His sodium is 138, and his potassium is 5.5. His glucose level is 6 millimole per liter. He's ventilated for RDS. He has uh, UVC. Uh, which is in a good position at uh, T10. He's receiving morphine, 0.02 milligram per kg per hour. And uh, morphine is mixed in D10W. And it's running, and they're using concentration of morphine, 0.1 milligram per mil. And the reason for uh, using morphine, he's on high frequency jet ventilation. This is a North American sort of uh, type of ventilation. He has a radial line and using half normal saline and with one unit of, of TPN per, of heparin for each mil. And it's running on one mil an hour. So you can see he's running one mil for the radial line and running uh, not calculated uh, how much morphine is running, but mostly it's 0.5 mil an hour. Okay. So let's start and so let's start and calculate how we write the TPM. Now the TFI, because he's receiving yesterday 80, will go to 100. Okay. His birth weight is less than his, is more than his current weight. So we will be using his birth weight. So we'll give him 100 times 12, you will get 120 ml, which is 5 ml per hour. This is his total fluid. Because he was not feeding, so I will assess if I can start feeding today. He's getting his art line 1 ml an hour, and he's getting 0.2 ml an hour for his uh, morphine. So that means he's getting 1.2 from 4, so the remaining is 3.8. I will use 20% 20, 20 because I am very limited with the IV fluid, so I'm going to use 20% lipid of SMOF, which will be 1 gram per kg. So I will be giving him 1 gram per kg. And because it's 20%, that means 1 gram per kg times 5 equal 5 mil. Okay, but he's 12, so I ignored the 0.2 and I gave him on over one kilo. So he will receive 0.2 mil an hour. So he received 0.2 mil an hour from lipid, 0.2 mil an hour from morphine, and he's getting uh, one mil uh, as art line. So that means the remaining TPN basic of protein and sugar is 3.6. Sugar level is six, and remember it's between four and eight, so I will use D10. It will give him 3.8 mil an hour, and it's, if you calculate it, and if you know how to calculate, it will be five milligram per kg per minute. 
It's the second day, so I'm going to start some sodium chloride. I will give him one millimole per kg. And I will give him also 0.5 millimole of, uh, per kg of potassium chloride. And I will add some calcium. The reason uh, because um, uh, uh, he's premature. So I'm going to start some calcium. And I have to, non, I don't need to use heparin because it's a UVC. And I don't, I won't add some, I don't know whether to add today, but I, I, I will think about adding some trace element and a multivitamin. In case two, um, I don't know if you guys want to participate, but I can continue. But if you guys want to participate, that would be great. So right fluid order for one hour age, 40 weeks with gastroschisis. Uh, the surgeon tried to reduce it, but it's not reducible. So they put style, uh, silo and uh, they will keep monitoring the child because the space of the abdomen is not big. So they couldn't put back all the bowel uh, to the cavity. The birth weight is uh, 35, 40 grams. The child is receiving midazolam, 0.05 milligram per kg per hour in D10, uh, of concentration 0.2 milligram per mil. And he's on dopamine 7.5 mic per kg per minute of 800 mic mil concentration in D10W. So anybody want to prescribe TPN for this? Hello? Any? Guys? No, you can talk. You don't need to text. You can talk. What's the dope? You can talk. Um, what's the dopamine for? He's uh, having uh, bowel uh, being pushed back and he didn't tolerate that. And uh, most of them, when you do that, you need inotope because you'll get hypotension because the uh, bowel will press on the inferior vena cava and reduce your uh, preload and you cause some hypotension. And also manipulation of the bowel can cause some hypotension. And in addition, the bowel are exposed and you might get hypothermia and uh, also you might get dehydration from the exposed bowel. Shouldn't be happening, but if this is uh, 0.7 is not a big dose. Um, it might have some renal, renal vasodilator so it can improve your urine output. Um, the minimum is like five. Um, so 7.5 probably started because of hypotension. Anybody want to answer? <clears throat> okay, so let me answer that question. Now the child is 10 baby and it's the first day. So I will start at 80 mil per kg per day. And if I calculate that, I'm going to calculate uh, 3.54 times, times 80, you will get 283. And if you divide it by 24 hours, you will get 11.8 mil an hour. You subtract uh, the uh, uh, midazolam infusion, if you multiply 0.05 times 0.2, uh, milligram per mil, you will get the infusion rate. And then if you um, multiply 0 0.75 times 800 mic um, divided by uh, uh, um, or multiplied by 60, you will get the uh, how much dopamine. And then you need to uh, subtract the that from the total intake. I won't start any uh, lipid today. You need to chat, you don't need to text. Unmute yourself and tell me what you think. I cannot.
seems that I cannot hear you because you're muting yourself. <laughs> Ahmed, just unmute yourself and talk. Yeah, go ahead, Ahmed. You want a question? Yes. Uh, hello. Hello. You can hear me now? Yeah, I do. Okay. You ordered 80 cc per kg. Correct. He is. Uh, he was a term in unit. Oh, he's 65. Yeah, you are right. It's 65. Yeah, you are right. It's 65, not 80. You are right. We should, we should order 65. Uh -huh. that's okay. Yeah, that's correct. 65, not 80. I'm wrong. Okay. So the fluid should be 65 per kg. We need to check the sugar. And usually we start with D10. Uh, we have to subtract um, the uh, the uh, uh, infusion for the midazolam and also for the morphine, uh, for the dopamine, sorry. And um, we should check the sugar, but usually we start with 10, uh, D10 value. I wouldn't start in this situation, I wouldn't start any uh, electrolyte on the first day. I won't check electrolyte unless a 24 hours pass because if I do so, it will reflect the mom, so it won't help me. I will check the urine and uh, Ahmed, you can mute yourself if you want because you have backgrounds. Um, so what I can do is also I can uh, check the urine output, I uh, can check the sugar level and then monitor the child. So I would, in this situation, I would start only with the protein. I would give the, the child, uh, uh, he's a term baby, so I would give him somewhere between two to uh, two and a half gram per kg per day of protein. The fluid 65 ml per kg, and I won't add any lipid or uh, electrolyte today. And I will uh, add, um, ask for uh, electrolyte level tomorrow, but I will monitor the sugar today and I can manage the sugar concentration depending on the uh, sugar value. I would like to keep the sugar level uh, between uh, four to eight millimole uh, per liter. Case three, um, TBN for two hours old, 25 weeks gestation. His birth weight is 890. He received surfactant. Seemed that they gave him through insure, so it was extubated and they put him on CPAP of plus seven centimeter of water. He has UAC, he is using half saline, and they're giving 0.8 ml an hour. He is not on any sedation. He has UVC with two ports, so we have to divide at least one of them, receive at least one ml an hour. And his sugar is 2.1 millimole per liter. So, anybody want to answer? No? Okay. So, uh, this is a Britain baby. So, we have to start 80 ml an hour of IV fluid. The sugar is 2.1 millimole. So, we need to give D10. But also we have to, because this baby has less than, it's less than three days and the normal should be more than 2.7. So anything below 2.6 uh, we should treat is not enough to give infusion only. Now remember when it's 1.7 millimole per liter, it starts to affect the brain or we call it glucopenia. So anywhere between, below 2.7, I would uh, uh, give boluses at the first three days of life. But somewhere between from 1.8 to 2.6, I would increase the infusion. So because you have central line, so I would go right away. You can go to 12.5, D12.5, but I would go to uh, 15 because I have central line, I have two parts. Um, so, uh, I would calculate uh, um, 80 times uh, 0.89, so you will get 
ml per 24 hours. I divide it by 24, he will get 2.96, so I will make it 3. So I will give him 3 ml an hour. I have to subtract 0 0.8 for normal saline. And uh, I have to, uh, the 3, um, so the remaining will, will be 2.2. Uh, uh, .2. So I will give one mil an hour in one port and 1.2 in another port. I would go to D15 and then I calculate the sugar intake. So uh, you don't need to text, you don't just talk, please. Whoever that, Ahmed. Sorry, sorry for the inconvenience, but uh, can you please be easy with the abbreviations you use? Which, which abbreviation I use? Um, UAC and uh, UAC, UAC uh, uh, umbilical arterial catheter. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, and UVC is umbilical venous catheter. Yes, yes, that's it. That's okay, it. so the UAC is running uh, to keep it open and uh, it's for uh, investigation and getting the blood samples. And the UVC is umbilical venous catheter and it's two parts, two lines. Um, I usually hate them unless the child is very sick. Uh, because you need to keep them open and it's another source of infection. So I usually like one uh, unless the child is very sick. Um, so what we use right now, we hate to use double line. We use usually single line and then we put pigtail, which have three opening because we can remove them anytime we don't need them. Um, so in this situation, it's a double pour and then you need to worry about that. Um, so your sugar is low, so I would go with higher infusion. I hate giving boluses because boluses cause uh, insulin hypersensitivity and you get rebound. So unless it's or less than 1.7 in the first three days or less than 2.7 in the after three days, I won't give boluses. Um, so in this situation, I would increase the intake of sugar um, and then I have to calculate how much sugar. So if you multiply uh, whatever you're giving fluid, then um, uh, you multiply it by uh, uh, the percentage of the sugar. So let's say you are giving in this situation 72 mils, you multiply it and it's D15. So you multiply it by 15 and divide it by 100. Then you multiply it by, that would be gram. Then you multiply it by 1000. So you get milligram. And then you divide it by 24 hours. You divide it then by 60. And then you divide it by the weight. And then you get how many milligram per kg per minute of the sugar. And remember your sugar should be remaining, the sugar infusion should be remain somewhere between four <clears throat> to eight millimol. And if you're giving more than that, um, you need to increase it. Remember that at D15, then you need central line. And here, unfortunately, we have a central line. Now here we need to start TPN. Um, so I would start TPN starter. The problem with TPN starter has no sugar. So um, it depends on the response to the sugar that the increasing infusion of more sugar. Uh, in this situation, either I will wait a little bit to start the TPN starter or divide to half, half sugar, uh, dextrose D15 and half uh, uh, TPN basic. So it's 72 and if I divide it by the three and then I got 0.8 for the uh, line, so 2.2, uh, so I would give 1.1 as a sugar, uh, D15 and 1.1 as a TPN starter, because it has no sugar, has no coffee. Um, if I'm worried about the sugar, I would wait for starting the TPN starter and start only sugar, check the sugar again. And if the sugar is more than 2.6, then I would start TPN starter. If it's less than, I would wait also again. And if it's less than 1.7, I would give bolus of D10, two ml per kg. Okay. Right, case number three, right TPN for three days. He's 27 weeks uh, of age and uh, has um, HIE, although it's very hard to define the HIE in this age. Um, it's, it's, it's difficult to, because the diagnosis is usually more than 35 days. So I don't know how come this is HIE. And uh, the birth is 37. Uh, I think this is 37, not 27. That's why, yeah. So this is 27, I'm sorry, because there's no way you can define the diagnose HIEA um, at this age. This is 37, because the weight. So the birth weight is 37.90, and they started him on cooling. So let me correct that.
Um, so, uh, 37 week diagnosed with um, HIE and start on cooling, and he's 3590, and he has UAC, umbilical um, arterial catheter. Um, they put sodium acetate, seeing that he has some kind of uh, acidosis. Um, they're giving one mil an hour. He has a UVC also, an umbilical venous catheter. His sodium is 129, he has low sodium. And his potassium is 5.5. His calcium is 2.8, yeah, normal level, a little bit on the higher side, but it's okay. And his INR is 1.1. They're doing INR because of cooling. It's caused some uh, blood dyscrasia and, and having uh, abnormal coagulation. They start him on a clonidine, one mic. This is not uh, old spelling mistake today. Um, he's on one uh, mic uh, of uh, clonidine, and we use clonidine. Um, the reason for using clonidine is alpha-1 um, agonist. Uh, the other uh, members of this family is the guanfacine. Um, but we, use, we don't use guanfacine, we use clonidine. And usually clonidine used as adjunct for uh, uh, sedation. Uh, the reason we're using it here because of the cooling. Most of narcotic, if you use, will protect the brain from the effect of cooling. So if you're giving cooling and morphine at the same time, the cooling won't be as good as without morphine. So you need to try to avoid uh, uh, narcotic. If you want to give uh, phenobarbital, uh, you will not able to do EEG because it will affect the EEG uh, uh, finding. Um, if you want to use, so, if you use midas, you cause more sedation and, and, uh, and it's the, the not much of, of pain control. Um, most of these babies on uh, MPO because of low perfusion and, and the bowel might not um, functioning well. So that's why, and most of them, when they, you, you call them, they are very feeling very cold, so they are shivering. So the clonidine is a very good choice. So they are giving on clonidine. And they're also giving midas. Um, this is also wrong spelling mistake. It's 0 0.06 milligram per kg per hour. And uh, they're using 0 0.1 uh, milligram per mil in D5W. So anybody want to answer this question? How to give TPN in this situation? Okay, I'll give you five seconds. If nobody, I will answer. Okay, so you can see that this child is a 10 baby and it's day three. So they're supposed to start uh, 80, uh, 65, sorry, and then 80 and 100. And today should be 100 ml per kg per day. However, this child is on cooling, so most of the time we restrict the fluid. So usually we keep the fluid at 50 ml per kg per day uh, because of the cooling. And we give boluses of normal saline if there is hypotension or if we need more fluid, or if the perfusion is not good, or if the lactate is low, or you have a gas problem. So in this situation, is uh, the weight is uh, 37.90, so you must multiply uh, 3.79 times 50, and then you get uh, how much um, uh, uh, mil per kg per day of total IV fluid. And also the child is using one mil. Um, we can drop it 2.8 if we want, but see that they need more acidosis, more, more acid because of the, uh, they're treating the acidosis. We have uh, hyponatremia, so that's another indication to restrict the fluid. I won't add sodium today. Uh, you can add, but I, I would keep 129. I would keep it uh, without, but you can add more sodium because we are restricting the fluid. There's nothing wrong with giving somewhere between two to four milli equivalent per liter per kg of, of potassium, uh, of, of, of sodium, sorry. Potassium is 5.5, normal. Calcium is, is, is okay. The level is okay. A little bit on the, uh, a little bit on, you know, I would say normal. And the INR is 1.1, not bad. So, um, so I would start today, um, um, as I said, if I multiply 50 times 
3.79, so 189, and I will divide it by 24, so I will get 7.9. Then I subtract this, which is one mil, so I, I remaining is 6.9. And I will uh, give 6.9. I also, I can add some lipid today. And, and adding lipid or not is uh, questionable because uh, cooling will be stopped after three days and the child might start feeding. So maybe I will wait on the TPN today. I would give only uh, TPN basic and uh, um, I can add maybe three or four uh, millimol per kg of, of sodium. I can add 0.5 of calcium. Um, um, I won't add uh, of potassium. Sorry, I won't add calcium because usually with cooling you have a little bit on a higher level of calcium, so I will postpone that. And I won't add lipid today. Probably I would decide tomorrow uh, when he's off the uh, cooling, and uh, I need to subtract the dose of uh, the, of the uh, midazolam infusion, which is 0 0.06 times 0 0.01. Uh, you will get, uh, I think, 0.06 uh, point per hour. And so I think you will get 0.6 mil an hour. I need to calculate that. And it's D5 because most of these babies are in stress and the sugar. I need to measure the sugar. And I need to order another light tomorrow. I need to monitor the gas every four, uh, six hours to check the uh, lactate level to make sure that the perfusion of the bowels and other organs are okay because of the cooling. I need to measure the urine output and capillary refill and continue. And there is usually protocol for asphyxia on the frequency of doing the lights, usually every 12 hours, and the INRs uh, usually every uh, uh, 24 hours, and liver function every 40 hour, 48 hours. I think these are the numbers. I'm not 100% positive on this. And yeah, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. You chose uh, normal saline because of the hyponatremia. Can we uh, use the glucose saline? Where I chose uh, uh, normal saline. I didn't choose the normal saline. I would use Set. D10. Uh -huh. I would use D10. I would use add protein. I would add protein 3.5 million gram per kg. I would use D10. And I won't add lipid today because maybe I don't need lipid tomorrow because the child will start feeding. Um, I would start with 50 mil per kg per day because um, I will be restricting and because he's on cooling and his sodium is low. I would add sodium about yes. three to four. I wouldn't add potassium 0.5. I won't add calcium. I um, So I restrict, but if the perfusion is not good, if the baby patient has hypotension, if lactate is high, I can give boluses of 10 to 20 mil. I usually like 10 if there is no hypotension, 10 mil of normal saline boluses over 30 minutes. If there is hypotension, I would give 20 mil per kg. So when I restrict the fluid, I have room to do this. And it's, it's better than giving high, fluid and then overload the child um, and yeah I, I will postpone the lipid and order some lights every uh, 12 hours cbc and uh, inr and pt and ptt every 24 hours i would ask liver function every and sinotroponin and some other enzymes to monitor the uh, um, ischemia and, and and hypoxia that happens every maybe 48 hours or once and wait until I uh, rewarm the child and decide tomorrow on the lipid, whether I should give or not. And also um, waiting uh, the result of the MRI. Usually we do it at the age of five to six. So case number five, TPN 29 weeks, six days old, birth weight 1240, current weight is 1193. He has a PDA. They received two doses of ibuprofen. The sodium is 125, mostly due to either ibuprofen. His potassium is 6. Point. His urea is 12, so a little bit on higher side. His creatinine is also on the higher side, 135. 
His sugar is on the higher side, a little bit, 12 millimoles per kg. He has UVC, single port, um, umbilical venous catheter. He has UAC, umbilical arterial catheter, having normal saline at 0.8 mil an hour. So any ideas? He's a breather. So he's Britain, he's day six. Yes. So we start with uh, more than uh, 80. So we start on more than 80 today, day six. So probably we should reach 150 today. 150, yes. But he has a PDA. And his sodium is low. So I would restrict his fluid. So I would give him 100, maybe 80 max that I will give 100 times. Because he has PDA and he has a low sodium. So that's very important to restrict the fluid. Okay, so the TFI I would give um, um, probably 100. Let's assume that, depending on what we were giving yesterday, not mentioned here. And uh, um, mostly this child is on lipid, so I would continue the lipid. Um, I think at this age, the child would reach 3.5 gram uh, per lipid because if we have a, a fluid problem, then I would use the uh, lipid 20% intralipid to restrict the amount of them. If I don't have room, I can stop the lipid. I would use at this age, six days preterm, probably the protein is 3.5 or four gram per kg per day. And uh, I would keep the salt minimum or I remove the sodium. Mostly I would keep it at least 0.5. I don't remove it. Um, in, sorry, I, 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 I increase the sodium to the maximum, uh, which is like four millimole per kg per day. Potassium, I would give still give 0.5. Uh, we have urea low, we have creatines low, and um, I think we need CBC to check the platelet and see whether we should give the second, third dose of the itoprofen or not. The sugar is high, and mostly this is due to side effect of the protein of the ibuprofen and the PDA itself. It causes some metabolic acidosis and increase the uh, sugar level. So I would give uh, minimum sugar, which is five milligram per kg per uh, per minute, and it it can be D5 and it can be D15 and D10. It depends how much. Um, we have UVC, so I'm going to use it. And I have to subtract the uh, 0.8 mL for uh, UAC. So uh, I still we are below the birth weight, so I would use the birth weight. So we are 1240 times. I will start with 100. So that means we have 124 mL per day divided by 24. So we have 5.2 mL an hour. Um, minus the uh, normal saline through the line, which will be uh, 4.6. Um, so if you were giving, let's say, um, three grams of lipid, I'm not sure how much we we're giving yesterday. So if you multiply three times uh, 12.124, so that's 3.7 if you multiply it by five, because we are using uh, 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 intralipid 20. So that's 18.6 mL an hour, a mil of, uh, of lipid per day, if you divide it by 24. So you're giving 0.8 mL an hour of lipid and the total remaining uh, from the fluid because we are subtracting the 0.8 through UIC um, uh, is 4.6, so 4.6 minus the lipid, which is 0.8. So the remaining is 3.8. Eight and 3.8, then I calculate if it D10, how much give me sugar? And if it's uh, um, if it's still high, more than five, I might go more than five. Very unlikely I go to D5. I would add some sodium to it and I would, um, I would add four, maybe more. And I would add potassium chloride. I would add 0.5 only. And then I would uh, order another uh, CBC. If the platelet is um, below 50, I won't give the third dose. 
because of the uh, renal shutdown and also the uh, uh, thrombocytopenia. But if the, um, if the uh, platelet more than 50, I would still give the, third, the last dose of protein and then order another light and CVC tomorrow morning and then manage it accordingly. And today I am done. I'm